Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know about shot listing, what a shot list is and how to create one. After that we're going to take a one page script, turn it into a shot list and shoot it. Let's go. Hey, I'm Marvin. In addition to being Studio Binder's content producer, I'm also a filmmaker. And as you can imagine, I have to create shot lists all the time. And by the end of this video, you will know everything there is to know about shot listing. It's quite amazing to me. Then let's get started. So first things first, what is a shot list? Well, a shot list is a full list of all the shots you want to get on a shoot day. Your shot list includes all the key details for every shot, such as size, type, camera movement, lens and gear requirements and really anything there is to know. Think of it as a shopping list to make sure you get everything to tell the story. It's especially useful when you have a more complex scene that goes beyond the typical master, medium, close-up. Not only will a shot list keep track of the shots in your head, but it's also a strategic document. It's a way for you to clearly communicate your vision with your cinematographer and first AD and plan out the most efficient order of shooting to make sure you get all the shots you need every day. You have to have a strategy, I told you earlier. All right, so now that you know what a shot list is and why we create one, let's actually talk about how to shot list. In order to demonstrate that, I pulled up my shot list that I created for my film Crossroads. So, to give you a little context, in the scene, my two main protagonists just finished a dialogue in the middle of a desert and Matthew, the male protagonist, is walking back to his trunk while Karen, the female protagonist, is trying to escape the scene. So she's sneaking up to the truck, opens the passenger door and tries to find the car key. Instead of the car key, she finds her own ID so she gets out of the car, wants to confront Matthew and runs right into him. That is essentially a jump scare effect. From there I'm going to create a floor plan. A floor plan is essentially a bird eye view of your set, like an architectural blueprint. So we know that Matthew walks from position A to position B, which is his trunk. So we draw a little line there and that gives you an idea of his blocking. As well as for Karen, she walks from position A to the passenger door into the car. And once you've done that, you want to position your cameras. So really think about what camera can cover what. Let's say you have a tracking shot with the camera, you want to follow an actor, you also draw that into your floor plan. Another thing why a floor plan is really helpful to me personally is to think about the 180 degree rule. What that basically means is you have two actors, you draw like an invisible line in between them and you want to make sure that the cameras don't jump this line. So it's really helpful to think about those things beforehand before you get on set. So now we marked our script, we have an idea what camera positions we need, where the actors are going to move to and we have our floor plan all laid out. Now we really want to go into the details and that's where the shot list comes in. So here I am in my studio binder project and as you can see everything is already populated um, but the very first thing I always do is go on my adjustment columns here and I can select everything that is important to me personally as a director and what I want to define. So the first thing I'm going to do is taking all the camera positions that I had created in the floor plan and want to duplicate them in the shot list. So I used visuals here, as you can see those are my screenshots of the film. Obviously you won't have those when you first start your shot list, so as an alternative you could for example use your storyboards if you have that, or reference photos from famous films that you liked, or you can go on the location scout, take photos with a stand-in and upload those. And those visuals really helpful to actually populate the rest of your shot list. And from there we're gonna go to shot description, which is really important to actually understand what's happening in the shot. For example here, Matthew is walking back to his trunk and opens it. And then we have the shot size, that could be for example a wide shot, medium, a close up and so on. And then we're gonna move on to the shot type, which could be a single, a two shot, a POV, an over the shoulder, whatever you like to do. Okay, so next step is the movement. Um, we have static, pan, tilt, or let's say we want to have something like a tracking shot, a pedestal shot, or even combining shots, you can do that here. And over here we have equipment, and now we need to think about what do we actually need to achieve this shot. 
For me as a director, it's really important to make this decision because let's say a handheld shot has a completely different feeling than put the camera on the dolly or on sticks. And next up is location, which is pretty straightforward. In my film, I only had a desert and interrogation room. And then over here we have prep, shoot and start time. So preparation I usually hand over to my cinematographer because it's usually something more technical. Let's say you have a specific lighting setup or a camera needs a little more love. And then the shoot time is something that I like to think about as a director because there are particular scenes that will take a little longer to prepare the actors or if you have to go through different emotions and you think like, hey, I should probably think about like four or five takes instead of a one take wonder because it is really crucial for your film. And then the next thing is start time. This really tells you what time you're gonna start this particular shot. And I'm gonna tell you this, I shot in a desert and you really need to plan your entire shoot around where the sun is gonna be when. So to give you an example, we shot everything in the morning with Matthew first because the sun was east and it was facing him. After that, we shot the car interior in the truck during noon because the sun was right above us and it's really difficult to shoot during that time in an open sun because you get like these weird shadows in your face, you need a lot of reflectors. And then after that, we flipped the entire world around and shot Karen's side around 2 or 3 p.m. So the sun was perfect for her face. So if you have the shot list planned out to a T, it will help you in so many ways and put you on ease when you're on set. Just take it with you and use it as a checkbox. So every time you get the shot you need it, check it off, you get the coverage you need in the editing room and your AD will have everything he needs from your side to create a perfect shooting schedule to make sure that your shoot goes smoothly. So let's check out the scene with our shot list in mind. Good. I love the desert. There's nothing. There is nobody around. Nobody oh, that can distract you from the darkest corners of your mind. Where the fuck did you get this? Don't focus on the little details. All right, guys, so I hope you liked the scene. And if you want to check out the entire movie, click on the link in the description below. In the second part of this episode, I will take an existing script, turn it into a shot list, and take you on set to shoot the scene. So don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified once that video comes out. Stay tuned, and I will see you there. <laughs>